Ladies and gentlemen, what is up? Welcome to another episode of 8 Bits. It's Friday, and that means we get to talk about video games again. It's been two weeks, JP, since, uh, since we've had a chance to chit chat. So <laughs> I have a feeling every time this happens, it just means that we end up just diarrhea mouth video games. And well, yeah, it's okay. It, yes. And uh, also, there's video games coming out, so we also have those to play as well. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is <laughs> it, true. it's a nice, a nice thing. I'm, there's no more backlog. We yeah, not for a long time at least. Yeah, we spent so many episodes going. Oh God, well, this is what's coming up, and this is what's coming up, and now finally we get to actually talk about them, which is great. And yep. uh, and of course we've got uh, we've got uh, next week going to be awesome as well. So it's not going to yep. slow down really so yep. I'm excited. and then week after that's better and then the weekend after that i think might still be good i think there's still a game coming out that week i think it'll still be good i think i think if anything i'm actually hoping that a few of the games coming out jp will t extend into the next couple of weeks you know like yeah well i know south park will south park is supposed that, to be a really long game that's the one that i've got in my head i mean i as i as dark I, souls 2 of course will extend oh jesus christ I, I my brain hurts thinking about it it's yeah. like uh, there's a there's a really crazy like love hate relationship going on in my head right now for that game <laughs> just like knowing what what is going to happen and so anyway how how things been man before we get into video games how's how's life uh, it's been pretty good. I think Skype is finally done unfreezing, so that's cool. I can see your face, and I'm glad my webcam decided to work through this entire opening of the show because for me it was just completely frozen. So yay, Skype! Uh, <laughs> apart Microsoft, from that, man, yeah, I've just uh, I've just been streaming and and doing a lot of recordings this week. We did a uh, we did eight hours of role play yesterday, uh, so that was Fuck a yeah. lot. I yeah, dude, could, uh, I, those those longer days, like the five hours we did on R and D, was like, whew. yeah, so, I feel you, man. Yeah, but it's it's still good. It's still good. And then uh, I think since Monday or or no, really since Friday, I've been streaming five six hours a day because there's just good games to play, and, and I enjoy playing games and also streaming. So when those two can coexist, it's a great time. Yeah, it's absolutely. a lot of fun. Those are the it's best. What about you? You spent some time in San Francisco. I did. I went to San Francisco not only to spend some time in the office, but uh, the Twitch uh, partnerships group went on a little retreat, um, and we went to Tahoe. And Tahoe. let me tell you, like, so it was like one-third work, one-third Hearthstone, <laughs> maybe like a very, very small one-hundredth you know, eating. There was a lot of eating. And yeah, then sure. I rode snowmobiles a lot. Nice. Um, let me tell you, JP, that was a lot of fucking fun. I it's yeah. it's one of those like I must do that again. And I like things like ATVs and three wheelers. And I mean, I grew up around these like jet skis, uh, wave runners, etc. So they operate very similarly. But on the snow, like it's fucking crazy, man. Like you can hit 55, 60 miles an hour on a snowmobile, like. Yeah. nobody's business See, that's, to me that's scary as shit because trees suck in the so, snow well i mean keep in mind dude like so uh, most of the time on like the general paths we were going about 35 maybe 40 um yeah. and then there were some paths where we would go like five to ten because it would be just wide enough for the snowmobile and we actually went to the top of, of mount uh washington it was fucking awesome huh. but there's like areas where it was obviously roads in the park that were just like straight straight roads and you would just fucking get going on them they had like a track okay, so there was bad. like there were places where there was no trees but there was also like times where we were driving on a road and you would look to your right and it would be like a 70 degree drop down like the side of the mountain like it was fucking See that, awesome i think that would be cool but thinking about that is like i wonder if i would be scared shitless that at any moment, I could just go, whoop, <laughs> kill it, myself. It was weird because normally I'm not the biggest fan of heights. Like, I can handle heights, but they make me feel uncomfortable, you know, like many people. And But I don't know what it was. Like, you just felt like these things were rugged beasts. Like, you had a lot of control over them. If you're dumb, you're going to fuck up. But, like, it, you know, I don't know. I never felt 
in danger. I but it was always kind. Of, I man, yeah, it was just. I had so many thoughts of like, man, dude, how fun would it be to just yeah. fucking one of these thirty degree would just fucking burn blaze yeah. off the trail? But it sounds I, fun. I when, when I was uh, when I was a littler JP, uh, when we had a a lake house just uh, west of Dallas. We rented some sea dews once. Oh yeah. Uh, this was a couple of years back, so I'm sure they're even faster and better and blah 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 now. Um, but I was not old enough to to drive one, uh, even for renting purposes. Like I think you have to be 15, or or maybe you have yeah. to have your learner's permit at least, or some shit like that. Some some weird stipulation to it. So my brother was the one that drove it, and I was uh, piggyback on him. And I guess it was just the sense of speed or. Or my brother was an asshole, or what? But like <laughs> the first thing he did is just like go straight, like full throttle right off the bat. And this, I remember the CD like revving up, and then us just like tearing through the fucking lake. And I'm just like hitting him on the back because I'm so fucking scared. Make it stop <laughs> because it's going so fast. So that's my my one experience with CDs or or uh, what whatever they're called on the fucking uh, on the the snow. So they're so, a yeah. lot of fun, I dude. I need to yeah. think. Relive a relive a new memory with that. So, well, we'll make that happen, dude. We'll make that happen. We'll make that happen. We'll make that happen. No, I, you Shit, know, what? it sounds Actually, like fun though. I I it just made me realize because we could have gone snowboarding or skiing, and like I gotta tell you, JP, like I'm a lake guy, right? I didn't grow up around. I grew up around snow, but I didn't grow up around yeah. mountains and skiing and shit. I grew up around. It's summertime. You're fucking on the lake. You're boating. You're skiing. You're tubing. Yeah, that's what I grew you're up kneeboarding, whatever. Like. I miss that shit so much, and I feel like if I'm not accomplishing that once a year, then I'm failing at life. So, yeah, we got, it. We got to make it happen. Got to make it happen. That we, we played. So these guys play so much Hearthstone. Yeah, I mean to the point I mean, where it, makes it turned sense. into drinking I, games and stuff like opening kind of packs copious. and opening opening packs and fucking legendaries, and uh, it was it was all sorts of crazy. It was a lot of fun though. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Hearthstone is a thing. It's a it's a video game. It is. <laughs> it is. It <laughs> My roommate got into people. that. Yeah. Yeah, he's been. He, he, I walked in like two or three weeks ago, and he's like, "Man, this Hearthstone game is pretty good." And I'm like, "Oh God!" <laughs> like four days later, he's How like, much have you "This game is pretty good. This <laughs> game is pretty good." <laughs> he's just like, like <laughs> I was like, "So you frustrated yet?" He's like, I play about five games, get real fucking pissed, take like a 30-minute break, and come back and do it all over again. I was oh, like, yeah, that's Hearthstone. Oh, God. I got to tell you, JP, like, I guess we could just kind of get <laughs> into it now at this point, but I'll just start with, like, with Hearthstone, and I've just been playing, like, I feel kind of like I'm playing Prodos, but I'm playing yeah. Mage. And <laughs> I just, I, you know, just like, I just roll in, I, I just, you know, blow people up, and it's had some success, so... Are you I, playing, like, double pyroblast yeah, or Yeah, like, stuff? I feel yeah. dirty as fuck and love every second of it. So Get them I, to 16 HP, and then it's like, hey, it won. Yeah, I they're did. like, okay, watch this huge combo play I'm about to do, and it's like, yeah, it doesn't matter, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's really dickish, man, but it's fun as hell. So, other than that, I haven't really been trying to grind up all my guys, but... I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I'm I'm glad I stopped playing the, star, the Hearthstone. I... The game is too frustrating for me. Also, I hate having to think that much when it comes to video games. I want, I want little, little to no thinking in my video gaming. And and all skills, all all reactionary skills. Right, right. It's it is weird that it's different on like a, a mobile. You know, on a, on a, it's cut because it's it's uh, the rumor mills are saying anyway, JP, that like over the next few weeks, it's very possible that we'll see like at least a public. Uh, beta of of Hearthstone on iOS. Man, that'll be huge. For I kind of think that's going to be stupid. But, you know, I've been playing Hearthstone on the Surface, so I don't have to feel confined to my PC. Yeah. I do got to say I like that. Like, it's kind of nice to be able to do that, you know, uh, fucking when I'm just, like, making dinner or something like that, you know? But yeah, it's still hard for me to sit down at my computer while I'm streaming or something and open it up and playing. I don't, I don't know why. Yeah, I mean, there's there's not that much uh, like feedback from the game in that sense, right? It 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 doesn't have too much going on. It's like every, I'm I'm sure you, obviously you can dedicate a whole yourself to it completely if you're sitting there constantly thinking of well he's about to do this or he might have those cards. But 
at the lower levels, it's just like, I want to do this much damage to him. I did that much damage. Let's let's wait a minute now to see what he does. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's exactly it, right? At the highest at the highest level of Hearthstone, you're sitting there going, Okay, you know, you've got coin, you could fucking yeah. Yeah, you, know, you can, uh, you know, depending on what it is, uh, you, you know, you you can cast these spells with that mana and stuff. So you, it's still a game that you can't just like, I think, aimlessly play. Yeah, I, I still dedicate time to it, but I guess from a mobile perspective, is, you know, I I, I don't know. I, it's hard to explain. I can't quite. I just feel like I have a more enjoyable experience when I'm, you know, when it when it's like portable. I'm like. Walking totally, so it I makes sense, and and I think that is where that game will do its best in terms of sales and everything. I think that is a. It's gonna it's gonna fucking it's wreck gonna go people's nuts. lives, dude. Yeah, like, it'll I'm be not company app shop, you, right? Et you know, like yeah. imagine all these people who do nothing but sit at their computer and play Hearthstone. Like I I right? know a few of these people, and suddenly it's like, ha ha, it's on the iPad. But where, like, what do you think they'll? Right now, it's wait. I guess they they don't need to price that. I guess it's just I, free to play. Har, here's here's my here's my bold statement, JP. Hearthstone, <laughs> and we'll never know if this is true or not. So it's even makes even more sense that I make. But I think Hearthstone will actually move iPads. Like yeah, I maybe. think that it will it will have a blip on the radar. Like maybe. I mean, let's just say. Artosis, right? Artosis doesn't have an iPad or whatever. Maybe he does. I don't know. But, like, he plays enough. I think he'd fucking go get an iPad so he could play. Trump. Crip. I, I feel like all these current players yeah. are going to be like, you know, shit. So That's true. Know. That's a good point. Yeah, I, I, I really wonder what the, uh, like, how long it'll take. Or even it might have already happened uh, when Hearthstone becomes Blizzard's biggest cash cow. It seems like it's already moving. In that, I mean, it, in that it's direction. definitely it's it's on that it's on the path for sure. But I really wonder if it's already happened. Because like WoW subs have obviously been declining. There's it's still the biggest MMO out there. There's no questioning that. Mm -hmm. uh, Blizzard is is definitely in like another great position to have a great year. They've got D3 expansion coming out. They've got Hearthstone, which is always huge. It's also probably coming out on mobile, like you were saying. And then they have a WoW expansion hitting in the summer, so they're going to see a big boost in that for at least a year. So, Which, by the way, people have been, in fact, you know, to, before the show, usually after we've got our topics, I, I like tweet out and say, is there anything else you guys would like to talk about? And, uh, several people were talking about this recent Diablo patch, which I don't know jack shit about, but they're saying... I know it that, came out, yeah, and I know it has the, the item changes in it. All right, but... It, I don't know. I'm hoping during open phone someone will call in and be like, yeah, here, let me break this down for you, like why it sucked and why it's awesome. But there's been a lot of chit-chat about that. So anyway, playing some yeah. Hearthstone. Uh, thanks uh, to the assholes at uh, Twitch who... Uh, <laughs> Who's the best player at Twitch? Um, probably Vic, the slick. Okay. Um, the worst is definitely Albert. At, yeah, ATK. Yeah, <laughs> Albert. Albert, you are so fucking free, dude. Queen 7. <laughs> I doubt he's watching, but he's probably sleeping. Um, anyway, what about you? What's first on uh, your list? So let, let's go in order of, of what I play. I think this is going in order. So I played uh, last week while you were gone. Strider came out uh, last, I think that was Tuesday. Might have been, I don't yeah, know when the game it was. wasn't like, it? Yeah. I think it was Tuesday. God, it seems like I played that yesterday. Um, so I, I picked that up on the PS4 because I wanted a game to play on the PS4. Uh, and it also came out on PS4 before anything else. So being that I was game hungry, that's where I grabbed it. Um, runs fine on that. I didn't have any issues with I, it. On the PS4? Yeah. Oh, great. I didn't have any issues. Um, I think it might... I mean, obviously anything's going to look a little bit better on the PC. I, I don't know how true that is with this game because it is probably just a straight-up port. Uh, but speaking to the game itself, I had a uh, a pretty good time with it. I think that there are some, uh, if you're looking for a super challenging game, Strider is not the game for you. It's more but, hack and slash, right? Yeah, but it, it's not, it's not hard hack and slash. Mm -hmm. Like, and and it's not, it's not a hard Castlevania or Metroidvania game either. It doesn't have the truest of elements of that. Um, but there is some, some seeking that you can do and, and go back and, 
once you get a certain ability, then you can go back to some of the first levels or, or second levels and get some extra power-ups and whatnot. But uh, overall, I had a pretty enjoyable experience with it. It is, a, it is the type of game where you can, by brute force, just beat the game. And for whatever reason, that was enjoyable to me. I don't know if it was the fact that it does run at... Uh, it runs at a, a 1080p 60 resolution and frame rate. Yeah, the so game that was really looks nice remarkable. You know? Right. Um, and I, th there were a lot of complaints that it looks um, like uh, what too, too boring or too mediocre or uh, that there's not a lot going on. But I, I think hmm. once you see that game in 1080p 60, which is you really have to play it to see it th that unless you're watching like a daily motion or you're downloading from Gamer Snide or something like that and not watching a YouTube video. The game looks really fucking good running at 60 FPS. Um, and it looks less good running at 30 FPS, obviously. And you commented it took about five hours to beat. and and this is It becoming, is a little bit short, yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is... It's and that's a, maybe on the long side, too. I'd, really? I'd take my time with it. It's a, it's a trend, though, JP. These $15 games that can give you anywhere from a, you know, a, let's say a four to eight hour experience. Uh, like, did you feel satisfied with the game and its completion? Um, you know, in this day and age, if, if I can sit down and beat a game in five hours, I'm happy with that, especially at a $15 price point. I think that it'll obviously be on Steam sales for less than 10 So if you're a little bit yeah, uh, right. it worried will. for the, the price, then just wait for it to go on a Steam sale or wait for it to go up on PS Plus in, in a month or two, um, especially with how many other games are coming out right now. If you're not hounding for a new game, you can wait. Um, but I, I really enjoyed my time with Strider. It, the bosses, while it is some pattern recognition and you do have to learn some bullet hell mechanics, especially the last, I would say, probably the last three bosses you have to, um, they're not hard. It it doesn't take much to to best that game. And I, I think I was playing on the hardest setting. I might have been playing on normal. Um, but I think that's also going to be a speedrunner's game. I think they already have world... Uh, uh. Like, they already have leaderboards uh, ranking the the top. It's built in. Ever. It's built in. God yeah. God damn it! I think that's so fucking clever. It's smart, right? God, it's and so like smart. after I beat the game, I went and looked at the leaderboards and like people had already <laughs> beaten it like an hour nineteen. Oh god! And it's no, just that's like so oh, smart, fuck these guys. <laughs> I think that's awesome. I mean, especially because speedrunning is just sort of like gaining in popularity, and you know, yeah. I, I appreciate all the tech that goes into the guys that do it for all the old ROMs and stuff, but. Shit, when you can make it easier, when it's like there's no fudging <laughs> around about it, it just, you know, it clocks you automatically, and that's great. Yeah. That's awesome. I, I had a really good time with Strider. Uh, it is a little bit on the easy side. Like, some bosses, you can just go up and hit the attack button over and over and over and over and over and just literally brute force your way through. Um, but... I still had fun with it. But, I mean, so. it, it actually sounds like either or, you know, I mean, I would probably play this on the PC. But if you are sort of hungry for at least something to play on your console prior to. Yeah, totally. You know. Uh, it's on Xbox One and PS4. Titanfall and I think Second Son or something. Yeah. I think both of those, uh, I think both of them run well. I, I don't know too much about the Xbox One version, of, but I played PC or PS4 and it was fine. And we, I got to play... I reunited myself with my favorite gaming controller, which is the the DualShock 4. I fucking love that controller, man. It's it's great. It is it is. Wait, so it's a wait, great controller. You mean you mean the 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 new one, the new PS4? Yeah, controller. DualShock 4. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's it's fantastic. It I really wish is. I could use it. Like I saw some people using it uh, uh on their PS3, but I've heard that there is some weird issues with that so i wanted to use it for for dark souls 2 but i don't know if i'm going to be able to is uh is there like delay or something there, or there's uh it, it's something with uh with the turning where the oh. turning misses it I, I don't know the exact problem i just know there is one okay so it's a little bit disheartening but i'm gonna try anyways because the controller's too damn good so Real quickly, I've got to I've got to continue on because I, I think even more than the previous Legend of Zelda on on the 3DS, um, I'm still chucking along on Bravely Default. In fact, I'm I'm real close to the end. Uh, really? Yeah, yeah. And I, I've found I've found it sucks when you remember we talked about how during the game you're rebuilding this city and through rebuilding yeah. the city you get access to all this other stuff. So I got to this point where like. I was so efficient at rebuilding my city that it's done. Yeah. 
the problem is like that takes away from some of the fun of it, if you know what sure. I mean. And now now it's just like it's just the game. And I realize right. like how much I like that aspect of it while you were you were playing the game. So it is a bummer that like suddenly that that aspect's just gone because there's no more progression. When you fill up the town, like are you able to? Have you defeated all the monsters in the town? I haven't yet because some of them are like level ninety nine. And eventually, do those like take over a portion of the town? How does that work? No, I, I know that's it, an element I, of it. I but. I not sure exactly how it works, uh, or if maybe it'll increase the rate in which the, they give you items. Uh, you know, the town gives you items, but it I, it has it had no effect. It, well, okay. Usually, I go in when I'm just like in need of that little bit of extra XP or job points. So I use it more for just like game advancement. Uh, but gotcha. I think I'm shy five classes. I'm coming to that like realization that like. I'm still not. I've still not found a place that is the ultimate place to grind money, job points, and experience. Mm. So I don't know if I'll ever even be able to hit multiple level 15s on jobs. But yeah. uh, we'll we'll see. I I don't see myself playing it once the game is over. But I've put in a good 42 hours through travel, oh. through just like the fact that it's portable, I can carry it around. So pretty happy with this game and stoked that there's already a sequel on its way. So I have to reiterate again, if you've got a 3DS, like Bravely Default, is yep. it's the Final Fantasy I've been wanting for a while. And they totally. do a great job at it. I haven't touched it, honestly, since the last one, just because some other games started to come out. And my interest in, in handhelds, I think, is is well known, at least around the, the people that watch this show. Uh, I mean, but yeah, I, that, that I game's share, still good. I share a lot of those you know a lot of those things with i mean i i think the fact that i did not you know beat zelda is is kind of attributes to that but at the same time i hope people would see that like this is a good enough rpg if you're really into that sort of shit uh right. you're gonna you're gonna definitely get your money's worth on that and it might like revitalize your your 3ds so i don't know totally. for me this this just it strummed that perfect rpg chord you know what i mean like just, yep, just perfect. I agree, and it's making me even more excited for South Park, just because it's got it's that the more same type traditional game, yeah. vibe to it. So I'm so exactly. excited. And yeah, I saw on on Neo Gap. There's a couple people that have already hit like max jobs on everyone, like every job max on every single person, like level 99. And so there must be <coughs> like an there area must be somewhere, or so, yeah, there must. Or be. they just leave their 3ds on auto and have like a one of those birds just hidden A or something, yeah, dude. <laughs> Because you could set up some pretty devious uh, loops on, yeah, your, you on your auto battle. You can. Admittedly, even I have a few times. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's how I played the entire game, so <laughs> I, I know it to be true. Uh, but yeah, go check out Bravely Default. I, I echo what we was saying. That's a, it's a good game for the uh, for the 3DS. And I know a lot of people have actually been... Uh, like, the, the friend code trading for that game, especially on the 3DS, is, like, huge. Like, everyone's like... Hey, you but you got to give me your friend code, man. You gotta, yeah, you gotta hook it up. Yeah, so it definitely. If you have a friend code, share it with too. friends. Yeah, it does. What's it next does. for you? <laughs> uh, so next on the list, I, I played Strider Tuesday to Thursday evening, and then I played a game that I did not expect to enjoy one fucking bit. Dude, I can't wait to hear. About this. <clears throat> so, uh, first of all, let me just say that I fucking hate. Nintendo's terrible. Uh, I hate the fact that the Nintendo eShop is just a gigantic piece of shit, and the fact that the Wii U only comes with 32 gigs. Because I had to delete every other game that I've downloaded digitally, which is every game for the Wii U, because it's it's it was 12 gigs to download Donkey Kong Country. How long did that take on the Tropical Freeze Wii U, dude? I oh. started it at 11 o'clock uh, Central on Thursday evening when I started playing Strider. And by the time I had beaten Strider that night around 3 a.m., the download had finished, but then the install happened. Oh, for Lord's sake. So the sake. install took Fuck. about 45 minutes to an hour, and the download took around three hours. Um, and then the, I, I think the game is only six gigs, but it downloads it, and then it installs it. So and then it, it kills the executable or whatever it uses to download. But it still uh, took that long just to download six It still took a very world. long time, yeah. Damn, dude. Well, no, it, it downloaded 12 gigs, but for somewhere in that process, six, or maybe it downloaded 12 gigs, installed 12 gigs, and then deleted the other 12 gigs. Because I had to delete every game on that console with the 32 gig system. 
So if you had the eight gig system, I don't even think you could download that. Yeah, I don't. There's no way. There's, there's no, no way. way. In fact, they, I mean, they they pretty much said that when the original version came out, and that's why they don't sell that one anymore. They don't sell it anymore. Yeah, yeah it's, it's the harder one it's to find. Like, a, yeah, which was yeah, dumb I think that's anyway. The white one. I mean, come on, like it really eight is. gigs. This, the, you know, my first hard drive was twenty megabytes. Like that, <laughs> eight gigs nowadays is like that fucking first hard drive, man. Exactly. Exactly. But. Once the game got downloaded, uh, I I immediately played that after Strider. Uh, I didn't play it on stream, but I was like, you know, let's it's 4 a.m. Let's just see what this game looks like. So I went from Strider 10 minutes before straight to Donkey Kong, and that could not be more of a glaring difference in games. Oh God, yeah. Strider is this this fast paced action game that <clears throat> you're you're constantly seeing shit on the screen. You go to Donkey Kong, while well, it is still a platformer, it is nothing like that. It is not similar at all in any way shape or form and i was just like fuck like i gotta play this game like I, I did not enjoy my first three minutes with the game and it's like i mean all in all it's a true donkey kong country oh platformer, totally right totally yeah so so yeah i i ended up turning it off uh went to sleep woke up the next day and it's like well there's nothing else out we don't have eight bits let's play donkey kong right let's let's play this game see how it goes and boot it up Played the first level, and I was like, you know, this game's this game's not bad. And then I ended up beating it Saturday evening, or maybe Sunday evening, um, which is quite remarkable, only because it's a Donkey Kong game. And also, it was one of the first Wii U games that I've ever played that quickly. And I have to say, looking back, this is now my favorite Wii U game on the system. What? Like, Even more than the Mario game that you like? It, went it is all a crazy better about? game. It is a better game than Mario. Why? Tell it me is why. first off the the challenge in this game. This game is fucking difficult. Like holy shit, we some of these games, some of the levels later in this game are batshit insane. Like think back to the the childhood days or, or the younger years of of Wii playing Donkey Kong Country and some of those later levels. You remember how fucking yeah, challenging they were those tough. were? Same. So shit, this huh? is like the same shit, the same exact shit. And I actually played on like the easy mode so after you beat the game you can go back and play every single level and unlock like the secret levels and stuff like that uh there's a ton of collectibles in every level uh like five to nine puzzle pieces How, plus the, did you the, get a percentage on what you? i finished with uh 69 percent of the game which is i don't uh, that happens with a bunch of people <laughs> apparently 69 yeah yeah and i think the game finishes at 200 percent. what so there's a lot of shit there's a lot of shit. Um, there, I, I think that you one of the the difficulty spikes is that like the game the game works where you play Donkey Kong right, but you can get Diddy Kong, Cranky Kong, or Dixie Kong, and they're like your they give you two extra hits, uh, life points or whatever, and uh, they also give you a special ability. Diddy Kong, you can stay in the air uh, and hover at the same level. Dixie Kong gives you an extra little boost at the end of your jump and. Cranky Kong gives you the, you like uh, if, if you played like Ducktales before, it's it's Scrooge McDuck's uh, pogo stick jump. Ah, uh, yes, okay. Um, and so I think on the hard mode, you you can't use them. You can only use Donkey Kong, and the levels are harder. I think, I'm not 100 percent sure about that. I I'm not even gonna bother with the hard mode of that game because it is too fucking hard for me. Well, um, it just it like inc or decreases the amount of hits you can take and shit like that. Yeah, probably. exactly. And you loot like their special abilities. Like I, I use Dixie for the most part of the game because the extra little boost in the jump makes it so when you miss time a jump or you're about to fall down, you get that little extra spike up. And then you can make the you can clear whatever jump you fucked sure. up in the first place. Saves you uh, a bit. And without that, I could see myself failing on a shit ton of levels. Um, but I. The, I don't understand. There, there were a lot of, uh, lot of people saying that the game was bland and that the game was the levels were boring and the the characters and everything and the the. I don't understand where that's coming from in the slightest. We like mm. some of these levels uh, are are super imaginative. They look amazing. The game runs 1080p 60 on the Wii U. It's not pushing much. But they do a very, very good uh, amount with the the art assets that they have in the game, and it looks awesome. Um, and, and the levels are super interesting. They do different stuff with the camera angle because it is a it is a 3D rendered game, and they can do a lot of stuff where 
Uh, like on the minecart levels, they'll put you in at like a slice or like an angle on the level so you could see forward and plan ahead. Yeah. Uh, and without that, the I levels would be way stuff. too hard. But yeah, I, I absolutely love that game. If you have a Wii U, it, it, is, uh, it is my favorite game. And I think if you're gun shy about playing the Wii U and you enjoy platformers, it might be a game worth looking into getting a Wii U. But once Bayonetta 2 comes out, comes out, I think that the Wii U now has enough games on it to be worthwhile oh, for any. Oh shit! The day is coming. The day is coming. Or JP will be like, "You can buy a Wii U now." I, yeah, I, we're getting there. It's getting to that point, man. I I absolutely love that game. Um, right on. It, and god damn, some of those levels are so fucking hard, man. Like it, it really is an element of like you finish one little like a, a two jump move in a in a level. And then you die, and you're like, fuck. And then you finish the next two jumps, and you die, and you're like, god fucking damn it. <laughs> and then you finish the next two steps. Like, I got up to 94 lives um, in the game. Uh, and then I hit, like, world three. And it's as if they plan this. Those lives start to diminish. Like, by the end of the game, I, I used all my lives. I had to go buy lives in the game oh, to wow. be able to beat it. Um, which you use with the in-game currency. It's not like a, a microtransaction or anything. But yeah, the, everything in that game is, is great. I had a fantastic time with it. Awesome. There also are some, some stupid uh, gifts out there of me. You, when I get into a game, I get animated, and it doesn't happen very often. But with this game, I got pretty animated because it, it has that feeling like when you beat a boss, even though the bosses are pretty simple, they're only 9, 10 hits, they're all calculated jumps and calculated hits, so it feels really good when you, when you do that. Did someone just post one? I'm sure they did. I'm sure they did. <laughs> this is like this is like <laughs> the JP Super Saiyan fucking yeah, man. GIF. That, there's a better one too. When I early on in the game that I I got real excited beating this boss. Hopefully someone posts that. <laughs> That's I do this stupid little finger. I don't know what was going on. I, that game. game is great. I, I had so much fun with that. That's awesome. All right. Um, so I, uh, I, uh, my my next game. So Renegade X. If anyone remembers yeah, Renegade, so it's the this is this is really hard. Okay. First off, if you played Renegade, this game like it it basically hands you a nice polished exact version pretty much of this game and when i say exact like people can get all nitpicky and stuff and be like some of the sounds are different or some of them are, you know like whatever they changed what they had to change but it is at its very core renegade the the command and conquer first person shooter that came out many 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 years ago um so the the whole concept of this game jp is that it's quite simple it's like imagine a command and conquer game playing out in a first person setting. So all of the infantry that you find in command and conquer for GDI and not are there all of the vehicles that you would find. I mean, like obviously not everything, but um, you know, specifically from the time er uh, era that they pulled this out of um, mm. you get defenses for your base. And you know, the whole point is to siege your opponent's base and, and try to, you know, destroy it. Um, here's where my problem with the game has come in. You can go in. You can download the game right now. It's open beta. Um, sure. So anyone anyone can get it. It's like a 1.6 gigabyte download. It's great. It feels good. The engine's nice. But you can tell, first off, it's a beta. It's got some dumb shit. Like, for example, I can't change the sensitivity of my mouse when I'm in a game. I have to do that outside of a game. Kind of silly. You know, you're going to find some shit like that. But if you look past that, you're going to see almost an exact replica of this game that, in my opinion, was so much fun back in the day. The problem huh. is, is that a majority of the servers that I've found have been in Europe, and I just mm. don't have the greatest ping to, and the servers I've found in the U.S. have been so fucking full that it's not fun because it's just a ridiculous spam fest of bullshit. No, uh, that's not fun. So I've like I've yet to have that good experience with that game, even though when I play it, I know it's there. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. You got to find it. <laughs> I've got to find it. Um, I, I, it, it sucks because um, it's, it's a lot of fun. 
How many people are in that? Uh, like, what? What's the twelve? Is it twelve v twelve? Fourteen versus fourteen? No, I was playing on. I think a. I uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I might have been playing on a sixty four sixty four. Oh wow, it goes that big. Yeah, okay. yeah, and that and there was like only maps that would split. But I think, I think a normal pub would be thirty would be sixty four thirty two thirty two, and there's some smaller maps. And I remember having more fun with like twelve on twelve. Yeah, yeah. Where it kind of like made I, more sense that everyone was sort of taking a role, but at at thirty two, thirty two even, it is fucking rabid cesspool of just spam and that's not as fun sure but you know you start off as basic soldiers or an engineer or you know uh, a guy and then like as you the uh, as you like kill people or take down tanks or heal folks you get credits and then you can upgrade to better weapons and um you know you can you can unlock various tech in your base so you can get better uh characters or better vehicles so it's, I mean, it's really solid. Like, the problem is that I don't know. I This obviously has a very, very big European following. Like, I don't know much about the development of this. I'd have to guess that it's like a bunch of, you know, guys in Europe that are putting this back together. But, you know, I, I don't, unfortunately, like, it doesn't have the power of Battlefield 4 where it releases. And there's just so many people <laughs> playing that you're going to have, like, a good time. Right. So, you know, I don't know what happens with this game. If, like, when it gets an official release, if, like, suddenly... You know, at least it has enough people where you can have some fun games, but that's been the biggest problem for me. So I, I don't know how you resolve that. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's just, it's yeah, it's a bummer. Is, is there, like, does it have the classic uh, modes? Like, is it only that one mode, or is there, like, a CTF, a, a deathmatch? There's or? only the Command and Conquer mode, at least in the open beta. They okay. just call it the Command and Conquer mode. Gotcha. So... I mean, but if you just want to go in and play it like deathmatch, like you could, but it's just and not... it's also it's very arcadey, right? To to explain it to people, like it's arcade. Yeah, like style imagine shooting. imagine if you just took the overworld view of Command and Conquer out, and everything was sort of like a battlefield. Wait, so I can be? Can I be in an obelisk? <laughs> um, you can upgrade the obelisk. Uh, but I can't be one. You can't really be one. You can be. Can I be a Tanya? Uh, yes. Really? Yes. With enough... And I can just one shot people from yes, like across with the enough, map. With and you can blow the shit out of shit. But it's like what the way it works is that you build credits over time with uh, your team, and so then that unit costs money, and you have to have so the right tech. What What is like the starting unit? Is it engineer? It's like it's a soldier, an engineer. A marksman, like a sniper, and then like a shotgunner. And okay. then from there, what happens is you can like pick those classes and then you can choose sub weapons that you, you know, you unlock with, with various uh, currency. Same thing with vehicles. You know, you don't have vehicles right away. But then as you get it, you get an ATV, you get a light tank, then you're getting mammoths, then you're getting stealth tanks and shit like that. So it has Sounds all cool. that lore of Command and Conquer, which makes it a lot of fun. It just has to, it needs a player base. And it also, Can I? yeah. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, it needs a player base, and then it also just needs like, you know, I think it needs sort of a stabilization. Like, I don't know that people are going to have fun if they just go into a thirty-two, thirty-two, and they don't know what yeah. the fuck's going on. Yeah. Can I be a V two rocket? You can fire them, I believe. Okay. Um, and yes, there is a harvester, so like you can go really? and destroy can the other person's. The I don't think so. Oh, but damn. you can pretend you can't, like it. play farming simulator with NC. No, <laughs> no, it's automatic. Yeah, okay. But, yeah, you do protect I, it, you get more credits over time. So Gunrun's been hyping that a lot. I'm sure that's why you you were interested in it. You might have played I played it, it sure. back in the day. Okay. Yeah, okay. and so we played like twelve on twelve pubs and it was a shitload of fun. Yeah. I you know, I might have did that use Game Spy back in the day? Oh yeah. Yeah, it did. Maybe that's why whenever I think of that game, I think of Game Spy. And I don't know if that was because it was like one of the first that did it, or you know, it uses Game Spy Arcade, I think, back in the day. And it was really big on that because I think, I, I think, think I signed up right. for IGN Prime to get right. into that beta, and go. that was look like at this. Look at that original box art, man. That Fuck. was like the business. How could that you be walking business. through a door and see that and not go, "Oh my god." <laughs> I'm gonna get this game, Command and Conquer. Man, game. some of the, the the Command and Conquer box art used to be pretty good. I remember going to CompuSA and seeing like the trilogies and 
in the Red Alert trilogies, and it looked pretty good. Oh, I do remember that box art. I do it remember that. It was out in 2002, so this is 12 years later. Wow. It needed a Pentium 2, 400 megahertz with 96 megabytes of RAM, a 16 megabyte 3D accelerator, a 4X CD-ROM, and almost one gig of free disk space. Did that run off uh, the, the Quake 3 engine? I think it did. I think I do remember that. I think it did. Yep. Yeah, that's some old school shit, man. It was fun. I just don't know if it's gonna, this is going to catch on. The way it needs sure. To. Oh, by yeah. the way, the bots are fucking dumb, JP. Yeah. They're, they're either kind of like the around. most amazing sons of bitches you've ever seen, or they just literally stand there and do fucking nothing. Huh. So. Huh. Let's see if there's screenshots of the old game. No. no bro. Yeah, I need to... God, there's so many games coming out, but that might be a game that I jump into, maybe for a a thirty minute run you know, or something. No, I what maybe what we should try to do is like try to get you know if we both stream it, and then we friends, get some yeah. people to download it, and we just find because there's a lot of servers out there. I need to get away from this four four page. There's a lot of servers out there that don't have anyone in them, you know. Yeah. So um, maybe so, maybe so. I, my my. Uh, my time filler or my my uh, go to game to relax at the end of the night, not stream, just play single round is still go. CSGO. Yeah. I still jump in like, ah, oh, let's queue up for a match. Ah, uh, I fucking own that match. I feel good about myself. <laughs> <laughs> let's move on. <laughs> let's move on. Let's go to sleep. Uh, the game's still doing it for me. It, I, I took like a, a week break and I thought I was going to go back and be like a complete shitter again. And it took about a round or two, but then I was back to to being normal at my my shooting it's also real fucking weird to go from like that game to uh something like i, I played a lot of games this week something like uh plans for zombies because csgo is like such a pinpoint shooter like precision shooter and plans for zombies is like such a spam fest <laughs> it's just yeah. complete opposite yeah complete it is. opposite yeah. but uh i, I want to go in order wheat okay uh, good let's any, yeah, anything else to say about Renegade X? No, no. Other than, like, I think I will try to maybe just organize. Like, if some people are interested sure. in at least checking out, it would be it would be cool to just get 12 guys, even if they're fresh to it. Or, what is or, the uh, the URL to check it out? Renegade-X? Uh, it's just renegade-x.com. Uh, com? Com. Yeah. Okay. And it's free to play. There's no, there's yeah, no money. Yeah, free to play right them. now. Uh, it's, it's open beta. Cat, are you kidding me? <laughs> Dude, he's somehow... Something is happening with my setup where, like, it knocks out it's that, my keyboard. It's static electricity, man. The cat comes in there with static electricity. I, I know that's what it is. I 100%. Because so I have, weird, I have a steel mouse pad, and when I sit down with a staticky shirt and hit the mouse pad, the it will, mouse goes numb. It will numb. reset it. The mouse goes dead. And At then what it pops point back will in. it just, like, fry my keyboard? Uh, it not, hasn't done it yet. It's I've not had turning back for on. Two and a half years. I'm scared. Oh, oh, it just beeped at it, me. Yeah, there you go. It'll work. It's just got to keep. Uh, it's got to get another charge from the cat. <laughs> your, your your computer is now powered by cats. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, I shit. I guarantee you that's what it is. Uh, they're probably hitting the cord or something. Okay. Anyways. Anyways. Uh, as I try. To so get next this. on the list, uh, Tuesday came around. And we had a bunch of games hit. First one that I played on Tuesday was uh, a game that. For some reason, a lot of people... All the games that came out this week is actually very controversial in, in the fact that reviewers gave it this score. People played it, said this... Fanboys, blah, 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 said this about it. It's a good game. It's not a good... I played Castlevania Lords of Shadow 2 first out of all the games that came out this week. Uh, it was the one game that I was most excited for. I played the demo for it, and it was a demo. Like it, The demo is, is actually the first 15 minutes of the game without the the ending cutscene to that. So it sucks because if you're... The demo's completely free to play. You can just download it right now on Steam. It sucks if you play that and then you buy the game and then you play through it again because you have to do it all over again. You can't just skip it. And that's a little bit annoying. Right. Uh, no one likes to play, play through the same thing again. tutorial bullshit again, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. Um, I'm playing the PC version. I know that the 360 and PS3 version look like complete shit because uh, they're 
I mean, it's PS3 and 360 games. They they are not amazing looking. Uh, I think even compared to the original Lord of Shadow, they look a little bit less good than that. <laughs> um, really? But on PC, yeah. On PC, I think it's definitely the, the version, if you can, uh, that you want to play because they have a high-res texture pack that comes with it that you can turn on. And it looks, it's, it's fucking night and day. Like the, it looks like two completely different games from, from what I've seen. Um, that's, that's actually crazy. It, it looks a lot better. Uh, I, I think that the art direction is, is stylized enough and, and it is important enough in that game to, I, I think the game looks great graphically. Um, it doesn't bog down my system. I pulled, even with fraps running, I was still doing 150 plus FPS. Granted, I still I have a pretty beefy system, but anything that gets that much FPS, it's going to run on pretty much anything. Um, so graphically speaking, it, it looks great on PC. I, I think that there are issues with that game, but for me, what's pushing me along is the story. Uh, and I'm definitely going back to it because of the story. Well, and this is m really interesting to me, JP, because like I was asking you, like I might have some free time tonight. Would you like push me towards one of these games? And one of the things you said about Castlevania, which I kind of chuckled at on the inside, was, "What did you think of the first one?" And like, yeah. what do you think of a quote unquote? Well, modern it's a very setting? important question. Yeah, I I understand why it is, but God, I was always under the impression that like. That, to me, I was like, oh, my God, I want the sequel to this game yesterday, the moment I saw all that. And, I, I mean, it's hard, to, it's hard to talk without, you know, like giving some spoilers to the first one. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, at this point, I guess here's your warning. Uh, you might want to turn it off. If you're going to play the second one, you're going to find out real quick. I you're going to find that out they, right away. They, 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 so do, the do game they starts, the, you play the tutorial, right? You play the tutorial. It's 15 minutes long, and then it goes into what I felt like. I don't know the exact time, but it was a 45-minute cutscene, and it explains the entire first game. It explains the 3DS game, uh, Mirror of Fate, I think is what it was called or some <laughs> wow. shit. Wow. And then it jumps in. It's like, this is where we're at right now in the story. This is what's happened. This is everything you need to know to jump into this game. Um, That's a, I'm and, glad they do that, actually. And it, it's also crazy, like, there, there's a cutscene, and I'll, I'm just going to go ahead and say what it is. If you don't want to know what it is, don't listen. Uh, I'll hold up my hand. When my hand goes down, I stop talking about the spoilers. Um, there's a cutscene after the end of the tutorial. There's, like, uh, this, this warrior of God or something. He's, like, wearing this angel suit, right? And he uh, swoops down. You fight him on the ground. And then he starts, like, chanting this, this um, I, I think it's, like, he's speaking in Latin. And he's, he's speaking to God with this cross. And uh, Gabriel or, or Dracula that you are now, like, grabs the cross and he's like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, I am the chosen one of God and this is a complete waste of your time. You're waste, like, stop. And then he just starts chanting with him to show that, like, it's not going to work. And the chant finishes and it literally zooms out, like, Dragon Ball Z style into space. And you're looking at Earth. And this nuclear explosion happens and, like, kills everyone, right? This entire war around you and everyone uh -huh. dies. And then it zooms back in and, like, Dracula standing there with the cross in hand and, like, there's nothing around. It's just, like, everyone's dead. And then it zooms back in and, like, spins. And then you see Alucard standing behind him. And I'm like, oh, shit, that's fucking rad. And then it stops. And then it, like, goes five or six hundred years into the future. Oh, and so I'm just like, well, oh, fuck, man. Like, I want to play as Alucard or I want to see Alucard more because he looked pretty cool. Um, he looked like Alucard does, but I thought that was pretty interesting. And I'm done talking about spoilers, so I'm putting my hand down. <laughs> Spoiler hand. <laughs> All right. That's uh, so, okay. Let's talk a little bit about the mechanics of the game then, too, because anyone, sure. you know, whether you're jumping in as a new player or whether or not you are, uh, you know, coming in for the second one, are you going to, or the first one, are you going to find similar mechanics? Is there anything that they've added to God, it? That... It's, it's been so long since I've played or, or seen the first one. The, the combat feels more, how do I say, more DMC ish? Okay. Because like Devil May Cry, uh, how you had like the two different weapons, uh, which I think were like uh, X and Y maybe for DMC. Um, in Castlevania, 
Uh, the bumpers, uh, left bumper brings up a, a void blade, which is basically just another name for a frost morn. And when you hit people with that, it steals life. Um, and then the right bumper is like these, these, uh, chaos gauntlets. And when you hit people with those, uh, it like breaks their armor and, and shatters their armor. Sure. Um, but to be able to use these, it takes some magic points. Uh, or some some magic, you can't just sit on those and constantly regen life, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and you get magic by killing enemies with your your normal um, whip, which is now like a blood whip. I think is how they get away with it in this game. Um, huh. And that's the combat, right? It's like uh, juggling between all three of those and uh, in in moving with uh, or moving and fighting against whatever you're fighting against. Some of the combat, or some of the enemies that I fought are are pretty simple they're not uh they're not too difficult um i think i'm playing on the normal setting and how far in the game are you do you think i am about five hours in i've i've defeated three or four bosses um i know right off the bat that there is like once you play through the tutorial and you go into like the modern world it's there's some dialogue. They introduce a couple of characters, and then it's it's about another hour before you really start playing the game again, honestly. And once you start playing the game again, we you are this thirty minutes is going to be real fucking tough for you because it's a stealth. It's a stealth. Oh, game. for fuck's sake! And it's 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 a really bad stealth game. It's a really stupid stealth game, right? Dracula, like you don't have like your powers, and there's like these giant guards, and you can turn into a rat. Like you turn into a group of rats and you sneak around to like hide from these guards and like possess these guards and I did not enjoy the stealth portion of this game at all whatsoever. I'm already like that will put me off a little bit. By the way, and it, oh, and it was ahead. twenty thirty minutes, uh, oh, but okay. after that, then it turns back into like normal normal castle. Kill everything. Yeah. Um, did you play Mirror of Fate? No. This I was no... on the 3DS. Yeah, I I don't think it reviewed that well at all. Oh really? It looks somewhat. It might have actually. I I know nothing about that game. I mean, I only it know the looks story. like a 3DS game, right? But it actually looks like sure. Castlevania style. I know the I know the story of that game only because Lords of Shadow Two told me the entire story of that game. Okay. You you play as Simon, and I think you play as Alucard before that. And this or, is sorry, a 3DS as... game. Yes. Yes. What the fuck? Uh, not not Alucard, uh, Trevor, who turns into Alucard or some shit. Spoilers. Wow, this this looks kind of. And yeah, the, there are more stealth elements within the game, but they're very brief segments, like 20, 30 minute segments. It's not a big focus, but God, are they fucking just the worst? Like it is. Why do it, they do it? They're they're not challenging. As well, it's just it's just, just fucking annoying. annoying. Like you just They're gotta tedious. wait and be patient, and yeah, it's like just very dumb tedious. Shit like that. I, yeah. yeah, especially for a game that's like, all right, we're fucking fighting like all these dudes. It's constant, like you're spamming buttons. It's like, all right, we're gonna turn you into rats, and you gotta sneak around, uh, make sure that no one sees you, and don't get stomped on, <laughs> and and figure this out. And it's like little puzzle things. I don't know, uh, but apart from that, like. I'm still really interested in this game. I really want to know what happens with the story. Uh, I, I've heard a bunch of people say that the the second half of the game is like really good, and I don't know why that is. I don't know if there's like some crazy shift in who you're playing as, or if the story picks up or what. Hmm. Uh, but it just seems it seems pretty cool. Also, uh, Patrick Stewart uh, character oh, Zobek. Yeah. Zobek is a fucking pimp in this game. Like, straight up wearing a classy ass suit. He's got like a giant fucking mansion. He, like, just is a badass from what I've seen. He's also got this guard. I don't, they haven't explained anything who he is. He's wearing like full fucking full plate metal armor. And he, he like pulls his blade from his hand. And it's like this coolest fucking weapon I've ever seen. That sounds awesome. <laughs> so I don't know who that is, uh, but I want to know more. And I'm I'm definitely playing that out of all the games that came out this week first to completion. And do they uh, anyone have like a amount of time? To uh, do static I think it's curiosity. Like a, I think it's like a uh, twelve to fifteen hour game. I think. 
I think. Um, there's a lot of like, at least from what I can tell, you 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 purchase power ups. It's got a pretty RPG ish uh, type thing to it where you can you can power up all your weapons and get new abilities with them, new combos or whatever. Well, kind and of like, I think kind of like Devil May Cry style, like. Yes, you exactly. Souls or some shit like exactly, that. exactly. And uh, I think that if you go back to earlier parts in the game, uh, is there is kind of like this overarching, I wouldn't call it a hub world. There's just ways to go back from place to place. And if you go back to some of those places, I think you can go to different areas within them uh, as you get more abilities. So, so I'm I'm having a good time with it. It's definitely a game that has a lot of different opinions on it so find a reviewer that you have the similar opinion to right and see what they say about it um or just go pick up the demo on steam if you have a pc i think there's also demos on on the consoles as well but play the pc version if you can it's the better version there you have it and i'll probably be playing that a lot this weekend sweet and you've already played a bunch too right i mean like uh, on your stream right Yes, yeah. yes, I have okay. yeah, five, six hours in. Um, sweet. So, uh, Plants vs. Zombies, Garden Warfare. Yeah, how much of that did you play? Not that much, but enough to play two game modes and kind of see how the progression works on it. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm really curious, because if you put in more time, which I'm guessing you did, like I, I have questions about the progression, because what mm-hmm. I saw felt rather slow and Mm. already i have in in the document i have payday 2 syndrome which i already felt in this game Mm -hmm. a little bit in that describe payday 2 syndrome payday Payday 2 syndrome is they present you with a really fun game that has like so much grind behind it that some a gamer like me would never actually be able to ever grind out what I really wanted to play or try in that game. Okay. So, and and let me elaborate, right? So, you yeah. know, as you play through the game, you basically earn coins. And the level up system is done through sort of like a cards and sticker thing where you open these packs and you get stickers. They could be anywhere from like cosmetic to stickers that unlock different, you know, specials for certain certain guys. Like, I, I and, and again, I don't know how deep it is. I don't know. That's why I was wondering about how the progression went. But already, just in, like, these few games, I felt like, wow, it could actually take for fucking ever to get even half this shit. And so yeah. that's, like, I can appreciate that a game has that much depth and that much to it. But, like, I can't ever commit that much because there's not a point, really, if that makes sense. Sure. So with that being said, just like Payday, it's fun. Like, I had a blast in the two games. Like, I love horde modes, right? The, you know, Nazi Zombies was one of my favorite things ever. You had the death match to it as well, if you want to play that way, for, like, true Plants vs. Zombies. So, like, everything about that was great. It was just, like, that one progression thing, which yeah. was, it, it just made me raise an eyebrow and go, whoa. Like, on the flip side, and, you know, feel free to jump in here whenever... The game looks fucking gorgeous, dude. It, it it does look pretty good, yeah. It it looks for the resolution nutcases out there. It runs at like nine eight nine hundred p sixty, um, but it does look really really good, like you're saying. Uh, it I I kind of envision it to be like if you remember like the Xbox three hundred and sixty first titles that came out for that, and then like these next titles like these one point five style of graphics like the next rendition but not the full next leap to the next to really understanding the architecture of that system right that's what it looks like it looks really good yeah yeah Um, i mean you're not the animations in that game are brilliant and that's what it is like the models and the levels are pretty decent but like it's funny because you'll see the grass and you'll be like god that's like so playstation one grass but then everything yeah. else, the mo- like the actual characters and, you know, the back of the sunflower, or, you know, whoever, he, it introduces some weird shit because it's third person. Should probably mention yeah. that's kind of important. So, yeah. like, sometimes when you zoom, like, a character model will be so big it'll, like, offer awkward, you know, viewing. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, the game, I really like the look of the game. It's pretty fantastic. 
So what do you, I mean? What are your thoughts uh, um, overall, just on gameplay? You know, like how? Well, to to speak to your your like comments on the progression or, or questions about the progression, um, you unlock everything that a class can do skill wise in about ten minutes or maybe less. Like in a single match, you can pretty much unlock all the abilities for a class. Right. Uh, which that is to say, it's 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 fire. Uh, which is what you start off with. You can shoot with your right click, uh, zoom in with left click, or sorry, left stick. Sorry, what is it? What are the fucking backs of the sticks called? Whatever that is. Triggers. Uh, triggers, there you go. And um, you can, with Y, do a certain ability. For example, the zombie soldier, I don't know what these actually called. Uh, it's Y, is it has a jet pack and you get jumped up in the air. Um, it's, it's right bumper, uh, you have a giant like V2 rocket attached to your back and you can shoot that and then it's other one I forgot what it was actually but they all have three moves every class has three moves there the is scientist. yeah there's there's four classes to each to the plants and to the zombie side regardless uh, the progression system is grindy if you want everything like it takes 10 minutes to unlock everything for a class, so you can unlock that pretty quickly if you just jump from class to class and not spend too much time. But there are unique elements that you can unlock through this sticker book, which I think you touched on a little bit. So the way sticker book works is as you play, you get these coins, and these coins can be used to purchase these packs of cards. Um, it's ranked in this 1,000... 2,000, 5,000, 10,000, 50,000, I yeah. think is the hierarchy of that. And oddly enough, there's no microtransactions here. You can't buy like 100,000 coins for right. 10 bucks or whatever. Which, which I, it I was, is odd, right? It is odd, right? It's an EA game on the Xbox One and there's no microtransactions. Dude, the moment I saw the sticker book. I, I was immediately like, oh, here it is. I gotta yep. buy, you got to buy this. Yep. I thought that immediately. And it really makes me think that I bet you they removed it at the last minute because of all this flack they've been getting, and they really needed this game to do well. Well, you know what's crazy, JP, is what if this game was free-to-play and they just added that in? As a free-to-play game, that would be fucking incredible. Yeah. So, I don't know. So, it is regardless of that, you get you get these stickers and these, these things from these packs. On the $50,000 pack, it is a unique character pack thing. And if you buy that, no matter what, you get a unique character. It's completely random. You have no say in what you get. Yep. One of the things that you can get, for example, is on like the sniper class for plants, it's like the cactus, you can get an electrical shock that when you attack with it, it spreads out to enemies around it. Right. And it turns your character to like it, it's a it's a unique attack modifier. In fact, here's the frost one up on the screen right now, which okay, is like so yeah, another yeah. modifier you can get. And so with that in mind, there are three to four per class in this game. And you can look at them all in the sticker book, but you have absolutely no say in what you're getting, which is really fucking shitty. Right. But like you're saying, it is incredibly grindy to un to be able to unlock on these. Like I do not enjoy that progress that side of the progression in this game. Well, I mean, let me let's talk a little about the sticker book because I think that's a fucking genius idea. Right? Like right. the whole concept of opening packs and stuff like it that already speaks to me as a gamer. So, you know, I'm sure that part of the balance of the game was trying to figure out that sweet spot of like how much do we reward people for, you know, right. for this progress in it. Um but you know, I I, I understand, I guess they like, it seems like they just sort of want to build in hours played to achieve a lot of this. Totally. Stuff, you know, so totally. like, I get it, but I just wish that it was a little bit higher, just like I kind of said on, on Payday. And, you know, this is weird. I don't know if this could ever be an option in a video game, JP, but, you know, it'd be interesting if like a difficulty level would instead more. be, yeah, like a rewards level. So it's like, sure. I know that as a, a father of one and a guy that works X amount of hours a day, like I'm probably not going to be able to put, you know, four or five hours in this. So I play on like this reward level where I could realistically unlock everything. And I totally. might just see, I mean, people might just be like, well, fuck it. I'll just play on that. But I, 
I don't know. Like that 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 aspect of games, I love what they're doing, but then they make it too grindy for me to want to really right. go after. And I think the biggest thing, and we are running a little bit over, so I'll be, I'll be brief about this. Okay. We can jump to a break. Uh, the biggest thing with this game is if you do not have friends to play with, I think your fun level in this game is going to diminish very quickly because after a single match, you have seen kind of everything this game has to offer. And while there are three modes, one of those is a horde mode, which playing with randoms, not that much fun. Playing no. with friends is what that horde mode is about. That is why horde modes exist is to play with friends. They, yep. It is the entire reason that horde mode is fun in any game you've ever played with a horde mode, right? Yeah. Unless you just really enjoy fighting AI, mon AI monsters with complete <laughs> randoms. I, there are people like that, I guess. But um, Just like Nazi Zombies. That's the biggest thing. Is yeah. how I would always see it. It was always more fun to like, you yeah. know, like actually this to me is more of a party game. Like, I know it's like weird yeah. to say that. In, in the same way that Nazi Zombies was a party game for me in my household. You know, sure. like that Friday night, hey, we got an hour to blow up, sweet, split screen, you know, zombies. It's a, It's kind of the same thing. To me, so I'll probably be playing it in that capacity, and plus totally. it's one that James can jump in on, which is cool. Exactly, yeah. It it, it is a game for for all ages in that regard. Yeah. Too bad uh, I only got two Xbox controllers because it cost me the cost of an Xbox 360 to get a couple more. Yeah, yeah, that's true. It's also like, what what's going on with the PVZ IP? Like, you jump from like PVZ one, which is like this giant fucking game, right? PVZ two, which was this giant fucking bullshit debacle on on microtransactions, et cetera, right. et cetera. And now it's an FPS. Dude, I I kind of <laughs> think that, you know, like how many other franchises have tried to like, you know, jump into a different genre like that? It is weird, but, you know, other than some it's of the really weird, weird camera Especially angles, this, man. but some of the weird camera angles that, you know, I, I mentioned aside from that, it all makes sense. You know, it's cool that they took all these characters and they turned – you know, the, the cactus into the sniper and the, you know, the sunflower into the healer. And then they gave yeah. him like a lightning gun, you know, like they put some decent thought into all of it. Oh it's yeah. Not totally. Just like, it, it wasn't like, I, so that's impressive. They did a good job with that. I mean, the, you have to remember like, this is pop cap, right? Like they made fucking insane aquarium and shit. This is yeah. like a, a totally, totally different that's approach to it all. And it, I, I think it's, it's somewhat impressive. So, um, yeah. And I think the, to speak one last thing about this game, uh, the DM or sorry, the the deathmatch, the TDM version of this has a unique twist on it because not only when you get a kill, it's first to fifty, but when you res someone on your team after they die, yeah, it all it takes away their away death. The kill. You can you can mark that off. It's they, like they only have twenty for seconds. Healing, yeah, exactly. So <laughs> I, I I think that is a pretty cool thing, um, but it, it, you know, how how many days are we? 11 days from now, there's a game called Titanfall coming out on the Xbox One. Right. And I really wonder, with a $40 price point, which is one thing we didn't mention, it is a $40 game for Plants vs. Zombies yeah. Garden Warfare. Are people going to be playing this, or is it going to be a ghost town when Titanfall comes out? Well, and this I mean, is... it's probably going to be a ghost town. <laughs> Yeah. I will be very surprised on the launch of Titanfall if you can find a game as quickly as you can. I right. I agree. And it's actually kind of a shame that it didn't get that PC and PS4 release because that It is coming out on things. PC. Uh, it is, but like not Eventually. on release. It's got it's got the Xbox One exclusivity. I think they've yeah. had that for a while. Mm -hmm. Um but yeah, I, I I I agree with you, JP. I think it might be Ghost Town except for you know the I guess the kids that can't get Titanfall or something. I don't know. Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna do a JPOV of it to to really flesh out. I need to play it a little bit more as well because it's it's been a couple days and it's also really weird when when a game like that comes out because I watch everyone else's thoughts on it and now those thoughts are becoming my thoughts In and I don't head. Like that. Yeah, yeah. I don't like that at all. So I need to go get my collect my thoughts on it again. But uh, forty dollars is a bit much for that. Is is all I gotta say. Um, Hopefully they they put it on sale or they make it free uh, with with the Xbox Gold rewards or whatever the fuck right, they call it. Right, right. So, One of these. Yeah, that so, yeah. makes sense. 
Yeah, we need to take a break. So. Yeah, let's take a break. We've already gone over by 10 minutes. So when we come back, uh, I don't know if there's anything left on our list, but we'll also be talking news and opening up the phone lines. So thanks for joining us. The second hour of 8-Bits will be happening when we return. Don't go away.